When a header file is included by other header files, there's a possibility that it can be included more than once, and this can create errors. Here's a simple example. Here I have a working copy of working.cpp with include a.h and include b.h from chapter three of the exercise files. And if I come along here in my working.cpp and I say pound include, include a, and I'm just going to move this up here where it belongs. And then I'll do another one, include header, include B. And let's take a look at what's in these. It's just simple structure in each of them. One is called struct A and one is called struct B. This is a common use of headers. And now when I build and run, you see that it works just fine. On the other hand, if include A were to also include include B, now when I try to build and run, you see I get an error. It says build failed. And if I click on this little thing up here, it says semantic issue redefinition of struct B. And that's because include B is getting included twice. It's getting included once here, and it's also getting included here. So that's a problem. The common solution to this problem, because it actually happens a lot where a file can be included more than once, especially by standard headers, the common solution to this problem is called an include guard. An include guard looks like this. If I come in here to include B and I say, if def, put one underscore in front of it and I'll say include B, and it's actually if n def. If n def include B, then we have all this stuff and we say pound n def. Up here, we also go and define include B underscore H, and I'll oftentimes put a little comment down here. So this is called an include guard. The first time through, everything from here to here is processed because include B is not defined. But the second time through, include B is already defined, and so all of this will be ignored. So that should work. I can come down here and I can build and run and everything works fine even though include A is including include B and we have include B included here. So this is called an include guard and you'll see this very commonly in a lot of header files. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead here and put the same in include A like this and we'll see this all just still works fine. Now, there's also a non-standard solution that's worth mentioning. I don't actually see it in the wild very much. It's an easier solution, it's not standard, but it is supported by most modern compilers. And this is a pragma directive called include once. And so here, instead of all of this, pound pragma once like that. And that actually also solves the problem. I can build and run and you see that it works and there's no error here. So like I said, this is obviously much easier. It's not standard, but it's supported by most compilers. Well, one disadvantage is that it may be fooled by symbolic links. In most cases, the implementation seem to be smart enough to mitigate that. And of course, the other disadvantage is it may not be supported by all compilers. The pragma directive that you see here at the beginning, pound pragma, this is a special preprocessor directive for non-portable and compiler-specific features. In general, pragma directives are not standardized. And so in fact, this is one that is not standardized in the C++ standard. So this is a common problem with a common solution, the include guard like you see here. You'll see the include guard solution most often, although the pragma one solution is more succinct, and although it's not standardized, it is widely supported.